Network Security, IPsec, and IPsec Policies Having discussed intrusion detection and prevention systems, which are mostly having to do with keeping attacks and malicious software off our network, I want to talk about something called IPsec, or IP security, which is a sort of group of protocols and policies that are used to keep the data that we have secure on a network. Whenever we talk about security, there's something called CIA, the CIA triad, that we need to keep in mind. C stands for confidentiality, meaning only the people we want to see something actually see it. The I stands for integrity, meaning what we send is what the other party receives. It hasn't been tampered with. And finally, we have to balance all of this against availability. It doesn't matter if something is super secure if no one can access it. So broadening out into this, that's where IPsec comes into play. So we're going to talk about IPsec, defining and discussing what it is, and then talk about two protocols that we focus on with IPsec, AH and ESP. We're also going to discuss three different services that IPsec uses or serves. One is data verification, protection from data tampering, again getting into that integrity, and private transactions, going along with that confidentiality. All of this supports availability, and the reason we have IPsec is to make sure that in our security we have uh, available data. Finally, I want to talk about some of the policies and the ways that we use IPsec. So as I mentioned, a good amount of the security measures that we use on a network are used to prevent attacks and shield the network from viruses and other malicious software. But not all security measures are used for the preventions of this malicious stuff. Some are intended to keep data and communications secure within a network. While preventing attacks is certainly a part of this, there are some security measures that exist to establish secure and safe communication paths between two parties. This is what IP security or IPsec protocols do. They're used to provide a secure channel of communication between two systems, or more systems. These systems can be within a local network, within a wide area network, perhaps even over a virtual private network. Now, some people might think that data traveling within a local network is secure, but this is only sometimes true. Imagine that someone has hacked into our network and we're sending data across it. Well, now we want to make sure that the data itself is secure. So while the entire network might be protected by firewalls, antivirus, IDS, IPS, there might be nothing protecting the actual connection between the two users. Generally, the data that gets sent across the network is not really heavily protected or didn't used to be. So people tend to think that just because their network has a shield around it, everything inside it is safe as well. But this isn't the case. It's important to have IPsec protocols in place to secure the data sent and the connections made over a network, both local and wide area networks. Now there are two main protocols that are categorized in IPsec. They are AH, or Authentication Header, and ESP, the Encapsulating Security Payload. Let's talk a little bit more about what these are. As the name states, AH, or Authentication Header, is used to authenticate connections made over a network. It does this by checking the IP address of the users that are trying to communicate and make sure that they're trusted. It also checks the integrity of the data packets that are being sent. In other words, is this the data that we actually intended and was it received properly? The other one, Encapsulating Security Payload, or ESP, is used for encryption services, which I think we've talked about. It encrypts data that's being sent over a network using AH to authenticate the users, ESP will only give the keys to the users that have been authenticated. So I make sure to authenticate using AH that this is the user I want to give something to, and then the ESP does the encryption for the people who have been authenticated, providing keys only to the people who meet the first condition. Now, if this seems like a broad overview of these two, it is. We're not going to see this a whole lot on the Network Plus exam, maybe one question. 
But it's not really worth going into depth because that's what Security Plus is going to do. And when you talk about Security Plus, you're really going to talk about these and IP security in more depth then. Now there are a few benefits and services that IPsec protocols provide. The first service is data verification. This service ensures that the data that is being sent across the network is coming from a legitimate source or a legitimate place. They make sure that the end users are the intended users and they keep an eye on packets as they travel across the network. The next service that IPsec is going to provide is protection from data tampering. Again, that integrity. The service makes sure that while data is in transit, nothing changes. This could mean the data somehow becomes corrupted or that someone literally tampers with it. Again, while IPsec protocols provide secure communications within the network, they don't actually stop an attacker from entering the network. So while there is a chance of an attacker on the network, they can't tamper with the data as it travels through because IPsec is going to make sure that doesn't happen. Finally, IPsec provides private transactions over the network. This means that data is unreadable by everyone except the end users. This is where that authentication comes in and where confidentiality comes into play. For example, if Mike and Steve have to send some private banking information to each other, the service makes sure that Mike and Steve are the only people who can read it. This isn't happening at any level that you can see. It's happening all within the protocols that already exist. When we talked much earlier about IP version 4, versus IP version 6, one of the great benefits of IP version 6 is it has all the IPsec stuff built in. So all of this is happening automatically within our new version of IP version 6. It's not even something we need to really worry about, just something we need to know is taking place so we can be a little more sure that our data is actually being secured. So here is what IPsec might look like if they were connecting two LANs to make a WAN. Though the two networks have their own firewalls and protection systems, they still have to connect through a public network, which we know isn't the safest thing. This is especially true when the public network is the internet. Now, using IPsec, the two LANs are going to create a tunnel of communication through the network, or through the internet. This tunnel is secure and only accessible by people inside their network. This IPsec tunnel, by the way, is what we're referring to when we talk about VPN or virtual private networks. So when we set up IPsec, the service doesn't just configure itself necessarily. There are some things that have to be put into place for the services to run properly. These are called policies. And policies uh, is what configures the services that IPsec provides. They're used to provide different levels of protection, data, and connections based on what is getting passed through them. In other words, just like with passwords, we have the passwords and we know they're built into Windows, but unless we set some sort of policy that tells the users how their passwords have to function, uh, they might not be used very well. Someone might just use the password password, which isn't even a safe password. So we have a password policy that ensures that people have a certain length, uh, history, and certain characters included in their passwords. The same thing sort of goes with IPsec. Now there are some important elements that we have to address when setting up IPsec policies. First, we have filters that are put into place. The filters determine which packets should be secure and which can be left alone. Now every filter addresses a different type of packet, so there's generally a good amount of different types of filters. All of these filters get compiled into a filter list where the administrator can easily change and reconfigure the filters to address the needs of their network. Now again, the reason we're going to want to have filters is because the more security, just like uh, the more layers you have on if it's cold outside, the more data it takes up and the longer it takes to decode. So the less security we have, the faster the data is going to travel, but the more security, uh, the less easy it is to tamper with. So we need to weigh this. Stuff like browsing on the internet might not be something we need to secure a lot, whereas we probably want to secure, uh, for instance, email a lot more, or even bank social security numbers, etc., etc. Next, 
Policies have to be provided the proper network information. This involves what security methods, connection types, and tunnel settings are being used. The security methods are basically algorithms that are used in encrypting and authenticating the data. Connection types determine whether the policies are going to handle a local area network, a WAN, or a VPN. In other words, IPsec needs to know what type of connection I have here so it knows what level of security to put into place. You can imagine that with a wide area network or a VPN, we need more security than with a LAN. All right, so although this might have been short in duration, we covered a lot of important things. First, we talked about the fact that IPsec exists. Remember, IPsec stands for IP security, and it's really not its own protocol. What it is, is a series or a group of protocols, services, etc., that ensure security over the IP protocol or the internet protocol. We also talked about two of the ways we do this. One is the AH protocol and one is the ESP protocol. Remember, AH stands for authentication header. As the name implies, it's a header in the IP packet that authenticates to make sure the users who are about to communicate are the ones for whom it's intended and who are sending. ESP, on the other hand, which stands for encapsulating security payload, is literally going to encapsulate the data in an encrypted form. And it'll only release this encrypted information to someone who has been authenticated to receive it. And remember, to do this, we use keys, both public and private. We also discussed the three different IPsec services that are provided, including data verification, which ensures that the data packets being sent are coming from legitimate places, protection from tampering, which ensures the integrity of our data, that it has not been tampered with, either tampered with from, uh, say, an attacker, or the data might have just become corrupted. Finally, we ensured that we're having private transactions, meaning that the data is confidential between only the people who need to be having it. And lastly, we discussed IPsec policies, some of the things that we need to have when we're creating our policies for IP security. For instance, we need to know the type of network we're on, and also filters, so that the appropriate level of security can be applied to the appropriate type of data.